uh, Dr. Gore Patti, an associate professor of physics at Delaware State University. And he's also the lead of the Advanced Quantum Sensing Center, which is a DOE center of excellence. Uh, Professor Patti, could you uh, please feel free to share your screen? And then you have about five about 15 minutes for a presentation, leaving five minutes for questions. We're a little bit ahead of schedule, so um, you can take a little bit more time. That should be okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Lee. So let me share my screen. Um, <clears throat> so good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry I had to miss the first... Uh, talk today because I was teaching until now. Um, and so my name is Gaur Patti and I'm the PI and uh, uh, director of the, uh, uh, the the DOD Center of Excellence on Advanced Quantum Sensing. So let me just put the slide so more on. <clears throat> and uh, uh, today uh, in my presentation, I'm just going to uh, give you a give you an overview of the center and uh, also tell you about uh, uh, various research uh, educational and uh, outreach activities that we are uh, uh, undertaking at at this center so before i tell you a little bit about uh, Delaware State University, which is uh, an HBCU and is also uh, a land grant institution. It has four colleges and one institute. It offers uh, 40 six, six uh, doctoral degree programs. Uh, the optics graduate program, which we are part of, uh, uh, is offered since 2008. And uh, uh, the optics program um, uh, since 2009 uh, through various funding sources uh, such as uh, NASA Miro, uh, NASA EPSCOR, MSF Crest, um, and also uh, various other sources of funding that are listed. We in October uh, 2020 we established uh, the AQS Center uh, through an award that, that was received from Department of Defense, and this award is uh, uh, given uh, through uh, Office of Under Secretary of Defense, and is administered by the Army Research uh, Lab. Uh, the this, our center is uh, housed in this uh, new Oscar building in the, in, on the, in the campus. And here on the right hand side, you see a picture of one of the AQS uh, lab. Um, uh, these are uh, various investigators uh, who are involved with the center. And uh, here's the list of uh, our partnering and uh, collaborating institutions. So first, uh, I would uh, talk about uh, our goals. Um, <clears throat> our primary goal is to perform uh, innovative research in quantum sensing areas of interest to DOD. Uh, we also env envision to create a quality uh, quantum science related higher education program at uh, DSU with the goal to increase uh, diversity and uh, number of qualified scientists uh, in the nation's workforce. Our final goal is to build a sustainable center with uh, state of the art infrastructure and uh, scientific expertise uh, that will help us achieve uh, national prominence in this uh, quantum sensing uh, research area. Uh, we have following objectives. So uh, 
We're conducting uh, research projects uh, that will lead to uh, new discoveries, tools, and quantum technologies that are relevant to DOD's, uh, particularly relevant to DOD's uh, position navigation and timing applications. Uh, we also, uh, we want to integrate our uh, research and educational activities with the physics and engineering program and also uh, the graduate physics and optics program at DSU. Uh, uh, this will help our uh, students uh, with uh, knowledge and skills on quantum technologies uh, <clears throat> uh, and also help with their uh, future employment in this area. We will enhance uh, interactions with uh, uh, our partners and collaborators. So that is also one of our objectives. Uh, uh, our research focus uh, is targeted towards uh, DOD's uh, modernization priorities, uh, uh, and the, which is stated here. And uh, our research pro projects are focused on realizing uh, ultra-precise uh, quantum sensors, uh, which are operating, which could operate at Heisenberg limit uh, by employing what is known as the entangled state or uh, uh, spin squeezing. Uh, some of the particular sensors that we are planning to develop uh, are atomic clock, and atomic and solid state uh, spin magnetometers, and uh, atom interferometric uh, gyroscope uh, or accelerometer. Uh, here's a picture of uh, a cold atom system that we, uh, we are recently de developing at our center uh, using what's, what is known as, known as a magneto-optical trap. And the picture shows uh, a, a double uh, MOT system, a magneto optical trap, and uh, some of the physics platform, uh, including some optics, and then uh, different types of lasers that are being used for cooling and uh, repumping uh, the atoms. Uh, here you see a picture of our students uh, working in the lab doing the alignment of. MOT beams in the setup. <clears throat> and I'll just show you a quick uh, video of uh, the, hopefully this will run. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, uh, quick video of the uh, MOT. Uh, magneto optical trap that we have recently uh, um, <clears throat> uh, seen in our lab. And what you see here is the uh, the cold atom, the cold uh, ensemble of rubidium atoms uh, moving uh, in position uh, when we uh, you bring a magnet closer to the to the uh, to the setup. And we have uh, a number of different capacity uh, building projects that we are uh, undertaking at the center. Uh, one of them is uh, called the Rydberg Atoms Assisted uh, Quantum Sensing. This project was initiated by, uh, initi uh, initiated by a DOD Instrument Award. Experiments uh, uh, on uh, Rydberg atoms to to realize uh, far field uh, millimeter wave imaging, and here you see the students uh, working in the experiment. <laughs> and uh, uh, through, through the IBM SPI HPCU Faculty Accelerator Award uh, to Dr. Uh, Renuthi Patti. And this project is focused on developing an atomic co of that award on the SPI website. Uh, uh, I also 
I'm happy to announce that the, uh, Mauricio Pulido is uh, our uh, first uh, graduate student who defended his thesis over last year. And here you see a, a, a Mauricio uh, doing a virtual defense of his thesis. Um, Mauricio has also co-authored in uh, uh, two recent journal papers. Uh, so um, I will next discuss about some of our educational initiatives. And um, in particular, we are uh, developing, we have developed uh, several new courses. Uh, one of them is uh, a course uh, titled Applied Quantum Information Science. And here you see the outline of this course uh, with, with the specific goals and the topics covered under this course. And uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, this course is also supplemented by a, a lab course, which is also offered in fall 2021. And you see students uh, doing uh, experiments in the lab two different experiments in the lab, a quantum cryptography lab um, and quantum erasure lab. So this allows the students to uh, uh, understand uh, the fundamental aspects of quantum mechanics uh, using uh, this kind of experiments. Uh, uh, this semester, we also uh, offering a new course uh, on introduction to quantum computation uh, via programming. Uh, students are learning uh, quantum computing in this course. They're learning quantum computing with IBM Qiskit uh, tool. And they're also uh, running energy measurements and exploring various quantum algorithms in the quantum simulator, and also in using the IBM quantum proce processor. Uh, we have an existing graduate course on advanced quantum mechanics, and uh, one of our faculty members, she has modified the content of this course to include topics from quantum sensing, uh, computing, and information processing in, in this course. And um, in 2021, uh, February 2021, uh, we uh, we joined uh, the IBM HPCU Quantum Center. Uh, so these are some of the activities that are uh, undergoing uh, through this collaboration. Our students are using uh, learning quantum computing using Qiskit Kis open source, and then uh, using their uh, quantum hardware. And faculties and students attended uh, the Qiskit uh, Global Summer School on Quantum Machine Learning. Uh, this was a certificate course which was offered by IBM. And uh, our faculties are uh, regularly attending the IBM HBCU uh, faculty seminar series. We also organized a, a summer research program um, in 2021 from uh, June to till August. And you see the undergraduate students uh, working in the AQS lab. And at the end of the summer program, they presented their research uh, uh, through a virtual platform. You see the, uh, the presentations done by several of our students. Uh, we are uh, periodically organizing uh, many outreach activities um, since the beginning of this year. Uh, so here you see the, some of the upcoming uh, STEM workshops that we are planning uh, to organize uh, for uh, middle school and high school students and also teachers. During these kind of activities, they get a chance to uh, tour the uh, labs, the AQS lab, and also the observatory and there are some hands-on demonstrations that we do uh, to pick uh, their interest in this area. <clears throat> uh, so this is my last slide. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, so obviously, you know, we had many difficulties 
uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, uh, one of the difficulties that we were facing uh, is finding uh, students, particularly uh, recruiting graduate students. And uh, <clears throat> now it is uh, uh, understood that uh, workforce development in quantum information science area is challenging. And so to inspire young talents and uh, uh, <clears throat> um, and to engage uh, our students, uh, uh, motivate them, we have uh, we are using following strategies. Uh, so we're trying to engage more undergraduate students in, in our research. Uh, they're working side by side with uh, graduate students. Uh, we're also trying to build a better in research infrastructure and then providing a wider exposure to them uh, by sending them for summer internship to DOD labs and using hands-on approach in uh, some of these new courses. <clears throat> so we are excited uh, uh, by these opportunities that we have gained uh, through this uh, uh, center, uh, through the funding that we have received from DOD. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, I'm looking forward to in this center. Uh, so, uh, so I would like to thank Professor Ile and uh, Dr. Lee for inviting me to uh, talk about our center in this forum. Uh, question now. Okay, thank, thank you very much. I'm very impressed with the scope of the center, handling things from like not just research, but also new coursework, undergraduate internships. Um, this is very impressive. So can you provide some advice to all of us about new course development since your program has involved developing so many new courses? Like how is this process handled? Were professors provided teaching release time to develop these new courses? And then regarding the experimental courses, how did you find funding for instrumentation and is the instrumentation specifically for that course or is it also used for research? Uh, no, so uh, yes, yeah, that's a very good question. So we, uh, so I forgot to mention, so in one of our slides, so when we submitted the proposal, uh, we said that we'll uh, develop these courses. And also one of them was developing a teaching lab uh, called Applied Quantum Information Science Lab. So we asked in our budget, we asked for uh, buying teaching equipment. Uh, uh, so, so that's what we're doing now. Uh, so, uh, uh, so no, they're not, they're dedicated for teaching labs. So right now we're in the process of uh, acquiring a lab space. So this will be a dedicated teaching lab and the equipments that we are buying now. So we'll go into that lab and the students will be able to use those equipment. Uh, and uh, release time, uh, there, has been a, there has been an issue for us, uh, faculty release time. And, uh, but uh, in the proposal we did mention, and so we, the faculties who will be involved in developing these uh, courses and who will teach these courses. So, so, uh, <clears throat> so we're able to manage uh, that. So the, the faculties who, who, who said uh, they will teach, uh, develop and teach these, these courses, they're, they're doing it now. So, uh, and they are part of the center. So it's all uh, initiated by the, by the center. Okay, I'm sorry. So they were able to handle both developing the course while handling kind of their normal teaching load? <laughs> yeah, so okay, yeah, exactly. Right, right. So uh, yeah, so th this is in addition to their uh, normal teaching load. 
Okay, let's open up the session for more questions. Okay, there is a question in the chat from Dr. Tara Fortier. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. What challenges um, have you encountered in finding grad students? And more specifically, do you see the receipt of doctoral of a doctoral degree and graduate salaries uh, provide enough incentive for those interested in pursuing careers in quantum information science and engineering? Uh, yeah, the challenge was um, mainly due to the pandemic, and um, so the students were not on campus. And we couldn't uh, invite uh, students from outside to visit and uh, interact with them. Uh, so, <clears throat> and in terms of uh, philosophy, uh, the, the, the stipend, uh, that's, uh, that is uh, the st standard stipend that we are paying other graduate students. Um, <clears throat> and so, and also there, has, there have been some issues with the tuition. Uh, so yeah, so there is no, uh, no incentive uh, for, for graduate students who are specifically motivated uh, to pursue uh, research in this area. Um, um, <clears throat> but hopefully uh, with our upper administration and they're focused on uh, expanding this research in, in, at, at the university. So, so hopefully um, we have requested tuition waiver and some other incentive, incentives. So hopefully it will improve in future. And so. Okay, thank you. We have another question. How many, uh, how many undergraduate and graduate students are you able to fund within the center, not like through external sources of funding? So currently we have, I think, uh, seven uh, graduate students and, uh, well, and about uh, five or six undergraduate, undergraduate students who are working throughout the, throughout the, throughout the academic year. Uh, in summer, uh, last summer, we got uh, five undergraduate students for research. And so we're expecting that more undergraduate students will join this summer. Uh, this is entirely through the funding that we have for uh, AQS. And then it was also asked, what is the ratio of uh, domestic to international students? Uh, so the, the university didn't allow us to hire international students uh, uh, last year. Uh, so uh, we have one international student uh, in the program that is a graduate student. Uh, but all our, and DOD also has a requirement uh, for uh, U.S. citizenship. So one international student in our program at, at the moment. Okay. And then another question, what specific lab equipment do you use for your quantum information science lab? I believe this is from another optics person, so. <laughs> we have I think a, your audio uh, cut out uh, a bit, if uh, you could start over. <laughs> could be my connection. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so we, we uh, the, the, our main platform is the, the magneto optical trap. Uh, we have a commercial uh, magneto optical trap system that we purchased from uh, Code Quanta, so students are working on that. Oh. And then we are also building uh, our own magneto optical trap. Uh, 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 so The optics, uh, lasers, optics and lasers, and then electronics, uh, which are used for measurements and uh, things like that. Uh, 
Great, okay, great. One thing that I've wondered also, have you, uh, and I'm sorry if you covered this and I missed it, solicited industry for any donations. I'm always curious if people get donations from industry for these educational uh, quantum labs. Mm, yeah, we haven't been able to connect with any industry so far. Um, <clears throat> um, but maybe that, that will happen in future, but we have a very uh, good collaboration with uh, Army Research Lab. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, your program is very impressive. So let's thank um, Dr. Uh, Professor Patty one more time, and then we will move on to the next speaker.